What's going on guys? Vic Vivi back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, the Illinois Alibaba AliExpress Virtual Pinball Machine deemed practically useless has now been officially retrofitted and revived. Let's take a look. You gotta charge your zap meter. <laughs> Alright guys, you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP on all the socials. There's a link tree link down below. Go there and click it. You'll see my Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know what you think about this retro fit. And like I said, you know, I'm going to talk a lot, so comment. Let me know what you, you know, think. What's your opinions on my opinion? Uh, I always like to hear from everybody, so... What are you waiting for? Go follow. <laughs> Be sure to prepare yourself because I have quite a story time on this cabinet. I'll talk about the customer. I'll talk about the build. I'll talk about my opinions. I'll talk about the biggest thing I'm going to actually make a separate video on. This is running the Cleveland Software Design Virtual Pinball Kit. I'm going to save a separate video on my review for that kit. I have a couple of things that honestly, you know, I noticed as a virtual pinball builder. Um, you know, just, just stay tuned. You're just gonna have to stay tuned, but there's a lot to discuss with this cabinet. I'll talk about the customer, very cool guy. He actually messaged me on Facebook, uh, on my Facebook uh, page. Uh, it was under Vic VP. It's actually funny, I have two separate Facebook pages for business, I should say it's a business page. Uh, Game Case Arcades is the arcade builds, virtual pinball, touchscreen, you know, anything arcade build that I'm going to build that I have a separate business page for. And then I have a business page for Vic VP. That's me as a public figure because, uh, you know, doing this for many years, uh, I just like gaming. So whether, uh, you know, I kind of learned that you should kind of separate it, you know, keep the business side on one page and then keep me a public figure because you never know, you might get reached out to a marketing from a marketing team to go and check out Stern's newest release, John Wick. You'll never know. <laughs> so again, they know me as Vic VP, and again, the Game Case Arcades page is uh, strictly business, yeah. Again, just prepare yourself. This is gonna be a long story time. You guys know me, I like to talk, I like to give you know insights, because you never know, I might have another customer that might wanna do the same exact thing that this customer did. The big thing I do wanna start off the bat, I need to exaggerate this hard. Uh, I did not build this cabinet. This right here, what you see here, the wood, the base of this cabinet, I did not build. This is why it's called a retro fit. Somebody sent me a cabinet, asked me, hey Vic, if you could upgrade this in any way possible, what can we do? This is the end result. That's why it's deemed a retro fit. I did not make this cabinet. You right now are gonna watch this video. You might even see it here. You might be going, Vic, you know, what's going on here? The screen is not edge to edge like your normal build. Yes, like I said, just stay tuned. I have a lot to discuss about this build. A couple of lessons learned on my end. Um, but in all honesty, I, I definitely gave the customer a very fair deal. I'll tell you straight out what, you know, the deal was and such. The only thing that I personally cut, I actually cut wood, was the actual back box. This side here and my DMD panel. We're gonna talk about the bezel here because I've never done bezels before. There is a lot to discuss on this, but again, I just can't exaggerate it enough. This is a retrofit build. I did not build this cabinet. Because if I built the cabinet, it definitely would be way different. 100% way different. You could take it as a negative, you could take it as a positive. I'll be brutally honest, uh, and again, I don't want to do, I don't like to say the word never. Um, I, uh, again, I don't want to shoot myself in the foot, because if I have somebody that wants to retrofit another cabinet, um, definitely I will link them this video. Uh, I would probably stay away from retrofitting, especially a virtual pinball machine. Um, you know, beginning this journey of arcade builds, I used to retrofit classic arcades and I got flamed because I was touching history. This was different because it's virtual pinball. Um, in the end, if uh, I'm, 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 
I'm gonna avoid. I'm gonna I'm gonna address customers. I'm gonna direct them. I'm gonna guide them to avoid retrofitting any cabinet whatsoever. Again, there's so much to discuss, but I think the best way to start this is to let's let's start with the customer. Let's talk about how you know this came about. I got a message one day from somebody who said, "Hey, Vic man, I have this virtual pinball machine." Uh, I'm assuming that it came from Alibaba or AliExpress. Uh, this customer said, I already have a virtual pinball machine, but it doesn't look like the stuff that you make. Uh, definitely the screen isn't as smooth. Uh, he also mentioned they didn't have that many games. Uh, I did go into the realm of I don't sell tables, I don't sell ROM, so we all know about that whole ordeal. Um, he had a different front end, he was running Pinball X, which again, once like I see videos of your front end, I could just tell how dated the system is. So basically what he said, he said, hey Vic man, I have this cabinet. What can we do to bring it to current gen? What could we do? I want to use this existing cabinet. I honestly, in the beginning, I did tell him in all honesty, you might as well sell this cabinet as it stands. Sell this, to me it isn't worth doing a retrofit. Uh, number one, I told him, I said, I don't know this, the, the, the cabinet specs, meaning I don't know the dimensions. Even if he went and started measuring stuff, we are now taking so much extra time that in my eyes, it is not worth the time. I didn't go into, you know, in depth as far as like, you know, what's the inside dimensions? How wide is it? How it was just going to be useless. Uh, it's going to be wasting time. I did tell him off the bat. I said, listen, I'll be honest, bro. I highly suggest you sell this cabinet the way it stands. You right now have a system that works, sell it on Marketplace. I don't know how much you would sell it for. I don't know how much he bought it for, but you know, at the end of this whole video, you're gonna just understand that, yeah, it would have probably been better to just sell this system the way it is. Um, he basically said, hey Vic, I wanna make sure I have a 4K screen. I want the 120 Hertz. But the biggest, biggest thing that he wanted was a 16 by nine DMD. He sent me a picture of it, of what he currently had. He had a 32 inch monitor that had this bezel. This is actually recycled from that back box. Um, he had a 32 inch monitor and then he had a regular DMD. And uh, he said, I want a 16 by nine. I said, off the bat, I cannot modify your back box. We're gonna, I'm just gonna have to make a new one. It's just easier for me to cut the wood and make a new one. So in the end, a couple of days go by, I guess he's kind of taking it in on what I said. He said, Vic, I'm gonna just send you this cabinet. I already paid money for this cabinet. I just wanna use what it is. And I guess also his decision was made because of the deal I offered him. Here was the deal. I said, listen, send me this cabinet. I'm gonna charge you $2,500 to, you know, bring it up to life, just that's really, if you really think about the wording I'm saying, it was just to do the wiring, which again, I'm gonna talk about what he already had, and it was including the new back box, 2500. The only stuff I did not include, I told him, I said, PC is not gonna be included in that price. Uh, I, I, I sent them receipts. Uh, he spent about uh, 980 bucks on the PC, so he gave me that separately. Other little stuff like the analog plunger, the uh, the RGB buttons. I basically just made one big shopping list. If in the end, if you think about it, I said, listen, the extra hardware um, you're gonna have to pay for. Twenty five hundred dollars is gonna be me fixing up the wiring of the system that he already had, which I mentioned before, which was the Cleveland Software Design Kit. Getting the PC again, not including the PC, but getting it configuring it, setting it up, and such. That's what $2,500 was. The big thing also is including the artwork and the new back box. So take it for what it is. In my brutal, honest opinion, he did score big. Because this, if I was going to do this all new, this is a five-figure machine, 100%, 100%. So in my eyes, in my opinion, he probably spent, I would say, I don't know, Again, the PC was like nine, let's call it a thousand bucks for the PC. Little like nitty gritty stuff. He probably spent like, I don't know, like 1500 bucks uh, in hardware. So, you know, looking at $4,000, that's what it is. 
Uh, that also did not include shipping. It didn't include shipping to me. I never include shipping. You have to deal with that. I have to right now basically wrap this up, get it on the pallet that he sent to me. It's gonna go exactly how he sent it to me. It's going back to him. And I get the price quote from the shipping company and he's gotta pay for the shipping to, to get it to him. So whether you think it's a good deal or not, I think that's probably why he jumped on it because I did mention to him, if I was building this brand new to spec how I would, you're looking at a five figure machine easily. Now again, while he was getting ready to prepare his cabinet, I do have a video of me unboxing slash kind of unpalletizing that cabinet. You can go back on that video, you'll see that. Um, he did mention to me that he already purchased the Cleveland Software Design Kit. I've read up on this kit, um, Phil, I guess is the owner, very cool guy. I don't know what he spent on that kit. I don't know, I could tell you exactly what he bought. I mean, from what I see, I didn't ask him how much he spent on that kit. That's why in a separate video, we're gonna be talking about that kit. And I'm gonna basically do like a screen grab, we'll do it live where I'll kind of go on his website and we'll kind of price it out. Again, not to make it official on what I'm gonna say right now, the way I kind of quickly skimmed the website for Cleveland Software Design, it was a lot of money for this kit. In my opinion, it, it was a lot. And um, again, you'll have to stay tuned because I'm just shooting this right now. Um, I think, I would believe that the amount of money that that kit costed, I could have done, number one, 24 volt solenoids. I could have done more with less money. I don't know if you could say more. I could have, I could have done equal to 20, the biggest thing was the 24 volt solenoids. Um, again, I'm gonna talk about what's inside this and all that. I definitely feel like I could have done more for less. In my opinion, in my eyes, when I'm looking at the website for Cleveland, this whole kit that he bought, I mean, we're talking over a grand. I'm not saying that's official right now, that is, like I said, I'm gonna tell you what's in this and then we're gonna go on the next video, we'll kind of sit down and, and judge it from there. But yeah, that's, that's what I think. Now we're touching up on Cleveland Software Design, let's talk about what's in this. Again, I didn't know anything about like what he bought, he just told me that he had a Cleveland Software Design solenoid kit. Uh, once I got it here and I unboxed it, you could see my reaction, I saw it, I was like, oh, there's a whole kit here. So he does have a pin one board in this, uh, it's a pretty big, beefy board. Uh, so he's got the pin one board, he's got the 10 solenoids, which is the 12 volt car starters, um, which, you know, in my opinion, it's, it is what it is. In, like I said, the next video, you're gonna actually see I'm gonna remove the TV, and I'm gonna show you I modified his kit. Cleveland Software Design gave this kit on like these white two by fours, I threw them out. It's like on a white skinny two by four where it's like your left flipper, your left slingshot, and then like on a separate board, it's your, I don't know, center, middle, right. Like it, it was basically on a board that you just stick to the wall. Again, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not trying to downplay it or disrespect, but when I saw that, I automatically said to myself, no, I, I took apart that board. So the big selling point with this Cleveland Software Design Kit, it is plug and play. In all honesty, when you see the screen out, I modified everything, meaning I rewired everything. So something that was supposed to be plug and play, it wasn't really plug and play for this cabinet, which also tells me that it's not totally plug and play for every single cabinet. Now, yes, the word plug and play is Vic, you just connect it and it works. True. But if you look at, for example, Mr. J Net's description on how to build a virtual pinball machine like I built on mine and all my other customers, the solenoid should be placed in a specific pattern. For example, I have my flippers right near the button, the actual flipper button. Then it's like the middle here. My slingshots are on a crossbar right where the slingshots are on the screen. So there's more to just sticking four solenoids or five solenoids on a two by four. And like I said, if you go back on the video of me unboxing it, I loaded it up. I guess Cleveland Software Design like team viewed into his computer and set it up and it did work. His Dofflink stuff does work. But as I'm playing this cabinet, I'm like, I can't tell what solenoid is what. I just feel like the same click 
You know, having two solenoids right side by side, it deems it pointless to even have two solenoids. Again, I'm not, I'm not trying to knock Cleveland. He is offering you a plug and play thing. It's, it's not done right. But in all honesty, if he was gonna give you this, you know, five foot two by four, it's gonna obviously cost more money. Uh, basically, in the end, I had to modify the solenoid. So again, this had a pin one board in it. It did have the 10 solenoids. It does have the uh, LED addressable matrix board which was pretty cool and he did already have inside this cabinet uh he had one led matrix panel whereas i went and i added two more to really kind of stretch it out i don't know if he offers a an additional kit for that uh and then he also did have these side rails customers sent me though these speakers these speakers had the o-ring i don't believe these came from cleveland software design these were not linked or hooked up. I basically had an out add wiring. Luckily, the LED addressable board on Cleveland Software Design had ports, and I added the two ports. I did have to wire it. I did have to adjust the cabinet code for that. But yes, as far as the Cleveland Software Design, oh, and he also does have the surround sound force feedback. The one kind of downside that sucked is, um, he does use the same, uh, you know, like the, those octopus uh, exciters. And once you stick those exciters, in all honesty, removing them is damaging. And sure enough, I removed all four. And I, I, I basically said to myself, you know what, to help the guy out, I just went out and I got four new ones. Because it kind of just had this like static sound on a couple, like I think it was like two. And I just bit the bullet, I said, you know what, I'm gonna get the guy new speakers just to you know avoid. I don't, I'm not the type that again. It's also me. I kind of I, I took it off the build. So like, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna tell him like, hey, your speakers are broken. It, that technically was my fault, but it's also not my fault because you can't really you can't really deflect from that. They are like double sided tape, so it's a 50 50 chance. I don't care how professional you are. It's a 50 50 chance where you'll. You know, you'll, you'll not, I didn't break it. It's just like, you know, I started hearing it and I'm like, no, this is awful. So I, I bit the bullet and I bought four new exciters. Uh, so again, from Cleveland software, he's got the pin one, the LED addressables and the surround sound force feedback. And again, this pin one board, you know, it's a big board. So just looking online, like the cost of this big board, it is what it is. This pin one board also has the options to put like the, the buttons. So it's got the encoder in it. It also has the analog nudge, and it also has the analog plunger inputs. It's got like the, the you could put the wires in it, but I still have to do my part and you know do the wiring. The analog plunger, for example, I did it where um, I have like my potentiometer. Punch, potentiometer is going to the pin one board. That didn't come with this kit, but I saw how much Cleveland was charging for it, and I was like, I could I could get this done way less. Uh, so yeah. That's uh, that's that's the gist of honestly as far as the the Cleveland design kit. <laughs> now, if you really look at the actual cabinet itself, the only thing I really kept was the cabinet, the wood. Uh, inside of this cabinet, it's actually wired. There's basically two main power switches. There's a power switch in the rear, but there's also a power switch in the front right. I don't really know why, but I didn't want to touch that because there was like eight wires going into it. It kind of had this custom wire harness. Um, you know, if you ever see like on PCs, like the three prong, you know, the thing you put inside of an actual computer, uh, there's like four of them. One was for like the screen and one was for like the PC. Uh, I, I wasn't gonna just cut all that out. That kind of stayed. I only used really just the PC power and that was it. In the front left here was an actual power button for the PC. This is the original PC that came with it, totally garbage. Uh, I don't wanna stretch up my artwork. Uh, this was like connected to like this VGA cord and this like power button in front was connected to this. Uh, it had like the option for power button, headphone jack and a USB slot, totally useless. I took it out and I just put my regular arcade power button in and called it a day. Uh, again, that's really the only thing that is stock here. Now, again, if you look very carefully and you watch my video, the, the guy that didn't send me the actual playfield monitor, he took that out, which again, I knew I wasn't gonna use, so junk it, garbage. 
Uh, he didn't send me the glass and he didn't send me the lockdown bar. So the way I kind of laid this TV down, which he's not even getting this TV, this is actually my personal Simpsons pinball party, 42 inch C3 OLED. This goes back into my pin. I'm sending this to him without a screen. Uh, I told him he already bought the screen. It's gonna be way better to do that than for me to risk it in damage shipping because this is gonna be shipped way different than what I normally do. Again, there's no glass on this, so it is what it is. So yes, that's why in the next video for Cleveland, I'm not gonna have the screen on it because it's gonna go back into my, my cabinet. Anyway, the, the original PC that came with this, it is running a GT730, which I don't think is even a legit NVIDIA card and it had 128 gig SSD. The only thing I took from this was the PC case. <laughs> the PC case, I actually was able to put my new PC in it. This right now has a Ryzen 7, 32 gigs of RAM, 4060, uh, RTX 4060 in it, and um, one terabyte M.2 SSD. So the PC now could support 4K, three screens, 120 hertz on that. So. That was a very big upgrade. This right here is literally useless. This is going in the trash. Vic, I could use that PC. You don't want this. This is, this is god awful. <laughs> now, since we're talking about the PC, I want to make this kind of clear. Um, you know, I've never been in this situation before where somebody, if you really look carefully, he sent me a loaded PC. It might have been outdated, but he kind of already had the tables. Um, you know, honestly, if the VPN community sees this and they're frowned upon on it, I really don't care. I've never been in this situation, but basically what I'm getting at for this customer to help him out instead of me going and, you know, putting VP8 on this, I am giving him a loaded VPN. Uh, you know, number one, I want to help him out because of the situation with this pinball machine. But again, he already had the tables. So I'm not going to be the type that's going to take VP8 and put it on this new PC. Oh, Vic, you could have just taken that hard drive and put it, no, that's stupid because that fucking hard drive is like a off-brand Chinese branded thing. Why am I gonna do that? Somebody that's gonna pay me for my time, I'm gonna do it right. So I don't normally do this on my build. I always say I do not include the tables, I do not include the ROMs, but in this situation here, because he already had the tables and the ROMs, yes, I am giving him a loaded virtual pinball machine. I don't really care what you guys could think about it, but it is what it is. This right now is loaded. Yes, this does have pinup popper on it. So I have all the media set, I have monsters, I have, it's all there. Everything is there. I have the volume low so I don't get hit with copyright. But yeah, it's all there. Again, I've never been in a situation before where somebody sends me a loaded PC. So, you know, take that with what you will. As far as the PC end of it, this is upgraded and it is gonna be virtually plug and play. So he's ready to go. Now, talking about like what was included, like what I kept from the original cabinet. Again, the customer got the Surround Sound Force Feedback Kit from Cleveland. Um, it's actually kind of funny because he's using like these two amps that I wouldn't really use on virtual pinball, but I use them on um, like my Guitar Hero cabinets. So it's got like the Bluetooth option on it. But the original cabinet had another amp for like the main speaker. I don't think these, these definitely didn't come from Cleveland, but the speakers were stock, and basically what I'm trying to get at with this amp, it's actually kind of funny, and I'll, I'm gonna do a full boot. When you boot up the, the system, it does like your regular like um, aftermarket thing where it goes like Bluetooth mode, and then it goes like connected successfully, like something like that, you know what I mean? Uh, I kind of laugh at that, but yes, again, essentially, you got dot flakes on it, compressed start, I have the main ROM, uh, my main, speakers off because this table for example has music I don't want to hear the but you could hear and I drain you could hear the surround sound force feedback you could hear the dock you could also see the strobe not the, well the strobes yes because I did the dock links on it you can see the matrix is there you can see the side rails again dock links and all awesome and work cool again the nudge is there so you could tilt you also have an uh, analog plunger. All in all, solid. You can see there also the speakers, adjustable and stuff that didn't come stock. Now I mentioned before how much I charged, but I also gave the guy a couple of extras. I did include the two beacons. On the top above, I also have 
RB and two strobes up here. So obviously during gameplay, you're gonna see some strobes. I did my normal strobe RGB underneath. And yes, as of right now, because I don't know if you've seen it, but I do also have the uh, underglow. Why is it not connected to the cabinet, Vic? Well, the way this cabinet is built, uh, unlike how I build it, where it's kind of like the side walls, I have the side walls and then I have the base cabinet kind of like, you know, the sidewall comes out. I put, you know, the LEDs like that. This is totally flat. So I know for a fact, if I put these LEDs underneath and I put it on the pallet, LED is going to break. So he's going to basically have to just kind of, you know, remove the tape and put it. Again, little add-ons that I wanted to add. I didn't charge him for that. Uh, you know, it's stuff that I put on my cabinets and it, I feel like it's naked uh, without it. So again, RGB, the strobe, the beacons, uh, shaker motor is in this. I did get a shaker motor. I put that in for him. Uh, that was the main thing. And again, the analog plunger. Uh, yes, I put all that in for him because uh, I do it on all my builds. So why not? It's going to be kind of bare. Uh, Monsters, again, the cabinet is Monsters themed. They're going to talk about the vinyl in a second. But again, if I go into like the Simpsons, if I go into a different game, your beacons will go off and such. So it is what it is. It's not, it's awesome. Again, any possible way that I could help. And again, the objective is to save the customer money. I'm going to do it. And again, the only thing like I said, you're just going to have to, you know, unroll this. I have a connector, so it's kind of a, you know, quick disconnect. This will not be sent to him connected, obviously. Uh, and again, I also did also the RGB flipper buttons. A lot of people like that. So as you can see, like with the Simpsons, until I actually press start, there you go. Not that I press start, the game boots. You have your underglow there and such. So it's all pretty cool. Uh, if anything, right now I'm going to turn the lights off and you can kind of see the flashes go off. So I'll real quick show you some gameplay. I'm going to even turn the lights off, but uh, it's pretty cool. I just want to make a note. He does have the coin door on this. It is a, you know, it's a Chinese coin door. I unfortunately could not get the coin door to work with the game. I don't know why this is a 12 volt coin door and I linked it to the coin button and it actually made the pin one board spaz out. It kept pressing five, one, enter. I would even go to the notepad and I was like, I just said, forget it, dude. And at least the advantage with this coin door is that you could go in and adjust the volume. Now, real quick, mention about the pin one board. I can't get shift keys to work. I'm going to let the customer reach out to Phil. This customer needs this by next week. So I just want to get this out. That's kind of little stuff that luckily he'll be able to contact Phil on. But something that I can't make, like something easy as a shift key. Uh, I followed the directions and again, I didn't message Phil. I'm pretty sure he'll help me out, but I right now have to get this thing wrapped and make the video on it. But without further ado, let's close the lights. Alexa, turn off the garage lights. And you can kind of see there the reel on the bottom left of the thing. It's a whole 16 foot reel, so he'll be able to go up the back box. Put some coins in, raise the volume. I just want to get some action for the strobes and hopefully the beacons. Oh. There you go. Cool. So you can see that beacons go off. Awesome. Solenoids. I'll bring you closer so you can see the matrix. And again, also shaker motor and such. I'll bring you in closer so you can at least see the matrix in the rear. Probably the best way to see the matrix is if I did um, uh, the getaway, honestly. I'll probably run that next. So plunger, yeah, you can see the screen, cool. Now again, originally the matrix was only half of that. I bought two eight by eight panels to add to it. Cool. Like I said, shaker motors in it. You can see your matrix there. You got the addressable rings going on. Very cool. And like I said, you could always exit and then you could always switch the game up and such. We could go back. Uh, I did say the getaway, so we could probably run that real quick. It's always funny. Is it either the getaway? There it is. Getaway. Cool. We'll run that. And like I said, it's, it's cool. I'm going to turn the lights back on this. So we can at least see. We're going to talk about one thing that many people kind of not argue but they give their two cents this right now i have the screen actually said how many people like it where it's indented 
instead of it being up against the glass, this has that slope that people like. You can see there, you got the shift button there. So we can put some coins in. Let's press some start and we'll shift. There you go. Again, surround sound force feedback. It's all there. And you can see again, the matrix in the rear. Well, this is awkward, but whatever. So it's actually very funny. A lot of the comments, uh, people do make the comment of Vic, I'm not really a fan of the screen against the glass. It should be indented like a real pinball machine. This is exactly that. This right here, it's actually got a channel for like glass. Uh, you don't really see it because I have the vinyl here, but there's an actual channel here. This bottom part of the TV is actually right. It's gonna just like, it's, it's above the glass. But the main thing again, this cabinet was not built around the screen. So you could see I have a gap here and I have a gap here. Nonetheless, it's just like my argument. You have black here. Not to mention, I'm gonna talk about the cabinet later. There was a shitload of holes here. So I actually had a vinyl black this. This way you could hide all the holes. But you have black here. I'm gonna look for a table that has um, side art, like the side blades. And you're gonna see what I've always made the point of, which is you have side blade and then black. Uh, that to me doesn't look right. But uh, the main reason I had to do it this way is because the matrix wouldn't fit. So if I wanted to push this against the glass and have the matrix up, it wouldn't fit. The, the, the cabinet is not big enough. Uh, again, this is considered, I believe, a wide body pin. Um, I did have a 50 inch screen downstairs lying around my 50 inch QNED. Uh, if I put that, it would be too deep into the cabinet, but it would have filled the sides. No, actually, I think it would have been like edge to edge. I wouldn't, I would, I would, I don't know. It wouldn't fit. That's kind of like the one downside getting a cabinet that is not built around the screen. It's a little rough. I'm going to bring you down here cause we do have a gap right here. I didn't get the lockdown bar, didn't come with it here. So my main thing is I would rather have the gap here than up here. So this up here, at least you could definitely see, you know, there is no gap. It's edge to edge. This, this TV goes right up against the matrix. But again, our lockdown bar section, I don't know. I don't know where the lockdown bar ends. So worst case, he does have a gap here. He could either put like, you know, some poly board or whatever they do, like the cardboard to hide it. But Unfortunately, I did not, he didn't send me the lockdown bar, so I can't really help there, but that's the main thing. I mean, wherever you're playing your hands are here, this isn't that awful. Imagine having this gap up here, that's got awful. Now, one big issue I have with this cabinet, it is the flipper placement. I did not drill these holes. These holes came stock. These are not at all in the correct spot. Now, normally when you look at a virtual pinball machine or any pinball machine, usually the button that's farther down is the flipper and then the button on top is the magnet save. If I put my hands like this, I'm using my middle finger to activate this switch here. And on this cabinet, I have the top as the flippers, the bottoms as the magnet saves. So if I kept it traditional where this is the flipper, I am playing with my pinkies. No. Just, just no, I'm not a fan of it at all. Now, you can take a look real quick at my Royal Rumble. That's, that's where the flipper is, right where my index finger is. So unfortunately, whoever made this cabinet, uh, that is my one big thing. And then not to mention while I was playing it, cause I like to test my machines. Uh, I had some wicked like imprints on my palms because it just, I don't have a lockdown bar. I'm not gonna complain about it, but yeah. I'm basically playing really with like my middle fingers. I could play and I could bring my, my thumbs down, but it's all about that lockdown bar. But yeah, that's uh, there you go. That's your flipper placement. Again, it's just, I, it's different. If you built your cabinet around the screen, like I do, it's, it's a whole different experience. Now, somebody did ask me, Hey Vic, what's your opinion? What do you think about having that screen indented? You know, I do like my screens flat up against the glass. What do I think of this? Um, I don't, I have, no. I, I, like I said, VPX, you have the POV adjustment thing that you could do. Um, it is what it is. I'm making it work. We wanted our adjustable matrix. So it looks great with the adjustable matrix. Don't get me wrong. But 
The indent, I'm gonna right now load up a table. I have to find it. I'm gonna load up a table with, with side art. Let's do that. So real quick, loaded up the forbidden table. Yes, his PC actually had this, so you can't flame me there. But this is one table that does have the side blades, the side art blades. You can see here, we have like the cityscape here. Again, you basically have side art to black, empty. That's just another reason why I like my screens up against the glass. But again, you could build your virtual pinball machine however you want. Like I mentioned before, in this situation, I had to go the indented route. This way we could still see the LED matrix. Uh, but yeah, all in all, pretty cool. I'm gonna try real quick to capture the ball so you can at least see the tilt, or I should say the nudge on this. So Cleveland's kit, this pin one, it's kind of weird how um, the the tilt is set up. It's, it's not like my KL25Z boards. But as you can see there, I go up and down, and there you go. And you can see there we did hit a danger, so I got a little sensitive. But yeah, all in all, pretty cool. Sheesh. Oh, get the slimer, get the slimer. Oh, I missed. Oh, missed again. Oh, didn't even aim. <laughs> all right, so pretty cool. You can see how the system is. Again, stay tuned for the Cleveland Design uh, Review Kit. Let's talk about the vinyl on this. Uh, pretty cool, the customer asked me, he said, hey Vic man, what would you do? Like, what artwork would you put? And um, I was looking into like the multi-pin artwork. Uh, I was gonna do that for my Simpsons, but then I said I already built my Simpsons, so I wanna keep it original. So I left my Simpsons. But on this one, I sent him a rendition from my artist. Again, that's Gaston Design. Uh, Gaston had a rendition of, um, it was like a virtual, it's a, it's a multi, multi-pin. So it had like, um, uh, it had Rudy from Funhouse. It had like the Tales of the Arabian Nights genie. Pretty cool. But the customer was like, no Vic, I'm not a fan. He did say that he wanted the Munsters now. So luckily Gaston actually has Munsters. He has a couple of different renditions. Um, I believe the one on the left side here uh, is actually from the Stern machine. Um, and then this side here, I think it's custom. I might be wrong, I might be right, I don't know. But uh, he basically gave me two versions. He had this one right here, was duplicated on the other side. And then he had this one where it was like a hot rod. And then almost like the back glass for Munsters with like the, I don't know, the dude with his like smoke coming out of his ears. Um, I, we basically went with this. So it's kind of cool, it's two different side panels on it. The back box artwork though, I believe that's Stern. Uh, that's the Stern back box. So pretty cool, we got the Munsters there. And then the custom DMD panel. Again, biggest, hardest thing is that these speakers are, they're big. This is like a four inch hole. I had to drill out. So putting artwork on this was a little tough. Uh, meaning like, I was kind of worried I was gonna chop his mouth off, but all in all came out good. We, both, we luckily have the girl, I don't know the Munsters, so don't, uh, don't flame me. But we have the girl, her eyes here, and then you have the Munsters logo here. Uh, same thing in the front, we do have the coin door in the front. Now again, this does have the coin door on it, so you are kind of messing around with the artwork, you kind of have a gaping hole there. Pretty cool, the Munsters logo there and such. Now the one real thing I want to actually make a note, because I, you can't really tell on video. Um, whoever again built this cabinet, they're not using real um, pinball hardware. The legs, he didn't send me the legs, these are my red legs from the Bride of Pinbot. These are like my workshop legs now. Um, I have my whole story about that. Uh, the actual thread is not your standard pinball thread. This nut right here, this is actually a, 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 a screw that you get for like TV mounts. It's like an M6. So I had to go to Home Depot and get that. I was like, what the hell is going on? Then not to mention, you should have seen the plunger assembly on this. Uh, it was god awful. <laughs> This was the plunger assembly that came with the cabinet. Look at that. It's like, it was this piece of wood and on the cabinet was a micro switch. So it wasn't actually like analog. It wasn't analog. So there was a micro switch here. So when you pulled, even like this, you didn't register anything until you actually hit the micro switch. Trash. Uh, this is probably like an Ag Games plunger. The shit out of here. <laughs> I did go with an actual Bally Williams plunger, and again, it does have the potentiometer on it. All in all, artwork is cool. I'm really glad that I went with this green T-molding. I was gonna actually put gold 
but I didn't have enough gold. Um, now, the one thing I do want to touch up on is applying this vinyl. Now, yes, I'm just moving you around so we can at least see the actual vinyl and the artwork. So, again, you can see there, this is the one with the, the hot rod car. Um, okay, I don't know what this cabinet is made out of. I don't know. Ray Arpeg Electronics thinks it's made out of Formica. Whatever the finish is, and I actually have the finish here. I'll bring you in close here where the bezel is. It is super slick. My vinyl would not stick on it. It was like mind blowing to me. I was like, what the hell? I would, I would lay it and then it would, it would easily lift off. And I'm like, what the fuck? So sure enough to get this to really stick, I actually have staples hidden in the rear and on the bottom of the cabinet. That's kind of like why you see here the vinyl goes over. It has to do that. This way the vinyl doesn't lift up. I don't know what like the finish is. And again, I'll bring you closer to the bezel here. That's also why there's no artwork on the bezel. Um, I, I wouldn't stick. It was, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. Trying to keep you like as close as possible to the back box. I don't know, I, you can't really see it. But this is just like, I mean, again, my 3M vinyl from Gulf Coast decals, the vinyl that I use on everything, it just slid off. I actually like took a video and I sent it to like Joel and Brad. Um, I'll probably just kind of, you know, throw it in here so you can kind of just see how easy it was lifting up. Uh, yeah, another reason why probably you won't see a retrofit. When I was applying the vinyl to this, my actual wood that I use for my cabinets, it went on like nothing. It, not, not, not that it went on like nothing. It went on and it stuck. It, it adhered. But this was like finished, like clean. Now, because I have you guys with the bezel, I want to talk about this real quick. The customer sent me his actual back box, the back glass. He sent me the monitor for this. And it's your typical decased, fat, beefy, 32 inch monitor that would accept VGA. And I was like, Jesus Christ, I originally had that monitor here. That's why I have the bezel here. Um, I then decided last minute, like once I had everything done and I was going into the computer setup for it, meaning like, you know, uh, doing aspect ratios and all that and then seeing how the screens turn on, this monitor was just, a, it was a headache. And I said, fuck it, I'm gonna bite the bullet. And I bought him a Insignia TV. This is a 32 inch Insignia non-smart TV. It's the TVs that I use on my Game Room Solutions 32 inch Pandora box builds. Big thing with this TV is that it does turn on. Sadly though, I had to keep the bezel. Uh, it, it is what it is. Uh, I would never put a bezel, you guys know that. But now you're talking about like, an $80, I think I, I paid like 75 bucks for this TV. I think it was on sale at Best Buy. A $75 TV versus a $200 to $220 ViewSonic that I normally put on my V-pins. Uh, again, I'm already biting the bullet, uh, but I didn't want to bite the bullet more. It works, don't get me wrong, it does work. It's just when I do the boot up, you have to wait for this TV to get the no signal screen or else you're gonna have messed up screens, but Again, just another reason why you probably won't see a retrofit from me. Now, aside from all that, it works. You can play your virtual pinball for right now. I'm going to actually power this down, but I'm actually gonna make sure that I have a little bit of volume up. Just so you can kind of see how the total like power up, power down process is. So again, I have the PC power switch in the front. You can see here though, like I exited Ghostbusters. It's got still the rings on but I'm gonna just totally kill the power. And like I said, for some odd reason, there's a power, there's a main switch in the back where the plug is, and then there's another power switch here, like an actual like power toggle switch. So right now, entirely off, completely off. We're gonna power on. You're gonna hear. That's like what you hear. <laughs> now my TV, it does need like the whole refresh thing. So I'm just gonna cancel that real quick. But the big thing is that right now, I have to make sure that this says no signal. As long as that says no signal, this has no signal, I could do my regular boot. Now it's crazy, like I mentioned before, about the, you might hear like a loud boom. Let's see. I like 
hear that on my pin, but not like that, where it's like a deep boom. It comes from the surround sound speakers. Uh, again, it's part of me, like, is it the amp? I don't know. Again, though, I have this set up as normal. After 30 seconds, popper will start. Uh, and yeah, it is what it is. It does everything you need to do. When you want to shut down, you just hit the toggle button right in the front. That is actually just two wires. It's an arcade button going to the PC motherboard, just like a regular power switch. That's what it is. Dofflinks starts up, obviously, once you start the PC. And like I said, after 30 seconds, your popper will start. I always have it set up like that. Now, Cleveland Design has like this RGB effect for the flippers. In a box. And that's it. Now I quickly cut because there's like a rock song and I don't want to get hit with copyright. But again, basic, come right here. I can hit the PC power button and the computer shuts down. I have the keyboard, I have the mouse all handy, ready to go. That is it. Now the one big thing about this cabinet that is not on it right now and I'm still contemplating if I want to put it. He does actually have, um, he does have back box hinges. I want to put it, but... I built the back box in a way that you don't need it. It'll be good for transportation, but you know, putting this, it's gonna, it's gonna cover artwork significantly. So I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll send this back to him, but I have to now figure out how to wrap this back box. But yeah, all in all, there you go. That is the Illinois V-Pin Retrofit. Uh, it came out great. For what it is, like I said, it is back to life. It is revived. So, I hope Illinois enjoys his V-Pin. I'm going to be wrapping this thing up today, and hopefully tomorrow or Wednesday, the uh, freight company will take it, and uh, yeah, it'll be on its merry way. Like I said before, be sure to stay tuned. I do have a full in-depth detailed video talking about the Cleveland Design Kit. That will be... I'm going to shoot that right now. So, yeah. There you guys have it. VicVP Game Case Arcades, another virtual pinball machine, a retrofit. Going out.